in the car this time we have uh, Jean-Pascal Vanny Purcell who for a long time has uh, worked as part of the IPCC. Perhaps this is one of the more popular acronyms on earth today and not many people actually know what it is or what it does. Could we perhaps start with that? The IPCC which was created just 30 years ago uh, in 1988 is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and it was tasked by the United Nations to assess in the best possible way uh, the state of knowledge about all dimensions of climate change in the most objective way working with scientists from all countries in the world. This last alarming report focuses really on uh, what seems to be a fairly insignificant difference, a half a degree yeah, one way or yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the other. Yeah, yeah. But it is not insignificant, it is, a, it is actually a massive, massive thing, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, the, the global temperature has only increased by one degree uh, in terms of global average uh, mm -hmm. since the pre-industrial period. Uh, we are now way uh, to go to, um, to a 1.5 degree C warming above the pre-industrial temperature. The risk is still very high, actually, uh, that we would go not only to two degrees, but actually much higher. Could you give us a digest version of uh, this latest report? Every half a degree matters. Every year matters. Every decision matters. That's the three-line summary of, of this report. The effects of climate change uh, we are seeing today are only just the um, appetizers, if I can mm -hmm. use that uh, word in that uh, sad context, of what we will see much more in the future if we don't reduce emissions to zero as quickly as possible. And um, that means around the middle of this century, mm -hmm. which is in a few years from now. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's a huge challenge. And at the same time, the IPCC says it's possible um, geophysically because we have not added to the atmosphere enough greenhouse gases yet uh, to make sure that we would go above 1.5 degrees C in terms of warming. And it's also possible if you look at all the options that are available to reduce emissions. I mean, you have technologies, you have uh, economic economic tools, you, you have legislative measures which have been taken in many countries and uh, which are starting to dent the emissions. Not enough, but it's a good beginning. You have people changing their behavior. It would be possible if there was enough political will to, to, to implement. An issue central to your work is the need for the globe to go to zero emissions as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah. Why is that important? Maybe as a physicist you can explain this to me. The amount of energy that's flowing in the uh, climate system uh, is the fact that every two hours approximately uh, the sun provides um, in two hours as much energy as we are using uh, in all human activities, all economic sectors in one year. By emitting CO2 and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, what we are doing actually is increasing the thickness of the thermal insulation mm -hmm. layer around the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little bit as if every year we were adding an additional uh, cloth, mm -hmm. an additional layer. Getting hotter and getting and, hotter. And then, of course, you get hotter and hotter. We need to stop, stop doing increasing mm -hmm. the thermal insulation layer. And stopping uh, that insulation layer means having zero emissions or zero net emissions, if you want to look at the details, but essentially it means zero emissions. So that's the challenge. And, and we, that, needs, that means going from a system which is um, more than 80% fed by fossil fuels today to a system that's, um, uh, that has zero fossil fuel. I've always said when asked, which is a question I often have from journalists, are you an optimist or a pessimist about climate change? And I, all, I very often answer the energy I would use to wring my hands to uh, uh, to cry about the, uh, the future uh, is wasted energy, actually. And we're talking about the importance of energy efficiency. This is also about mental energy and human energy. And I prefer to focus my energy on, on, on moving things forward uh, than to uh, complain. Um, 
what has been done in the past is done. There's no way you can change that, unfortunately. But we can still um, affect the future. The future is in our hands. I mean, in a one line, a one line summary mm-hmm. might be that one. Actually, the future of humanity is today in our hands. We're asking all of our all of our guests today to give us a, a takeaway. What's your climate message to the world? There are many solutions, and they're just asking to be uh, to be used. And um, uh, the speed at which we we implement them and, and facilitate their implementation really matters. And for that, uh, the cooperation of all. Uh, actors uh, is important and uh, this is why I, I wear that pin here uh, which is a quote from uh, Winston Churchill during World War II never never, never give up never mm-hmm. give up mm-hmm. Jean Pascal Van Ypersel thank you very much for, for, most welcome for coming coming into our red Tesla today mm-hmm. that's a pleasure thank you